Toronto is often described as a city of neighborhoods, and what makes those neighborhoods work are the magical gathering places that we, we build in our neighborhoods. Behind us at Sororum Park, uh, years ago, was just one of the ugliest eyesores uh, anywhere in the West End, uh, and it was contaminated and of no use to the community. Community volunteers got together and turned it into a thriving and exciting place. Uh, every November 1st you have the most lovely pumpkin fest. Uh, we have soccer leagues going on here that are oversubscribed, as well as all kinds of informal activity of neighbours getting to know each other. By taking that brownfield site and making it into a thriving community activity centre, we've made a neighbourhood stronger and we've made our human connections to each other stronger as well. I was on the, the subcommittee uh, for the, uh, the stopping of uh, the site for the, the already approved public works yard. Um, I went to a meeting way back with Terry Tijinsky and we, got our, we combined our energies and uh, our beliefs and got uh, lots of people together and stopped the public works yard. We stopped it. My dream, of course, was that it, was, it would become the park that it is and, and the community centre. So it's just amazing what you can do if you, you believe in something, if it doesn't feel right, just, just go for it. Uh, Brian said in a sort of humble way that he was part of a small group of neighbours. And I know, from my experience, that small groups of neighbors are dangerous people. <laughs> and, uh, and I think what's happened here is uh, an example of, of that dangerous, uh, sometimes from the perspective of local politicians, it means uh, people are going to want demand, push, work hard to help uh, build the community or to bring about things that strong, healthy communities need. This community has been through a lot of change. And so when I first heard about the um, Sororan uh, transit yards, bus yards, when I was first elected to city council in the in the mid 80s that was a fairly accepted use for the space there were factories up there and uh, industrial buildings around here and uh, people accepted that but as that use uh, moved away the community was going through changes and people were starting to uh, give expression to their desire for open space for their, for their children. The city, meanwhile, not always uh, the most uh, forward-looking, uh, had needs to meet where to keep the garbage trucks. And this was an industrial site, and one set of trucks was moving away. It made sense to bring another set and park them here. Um, the neighbors said, no, wait a minute. Small groups of neighbors said, wait a minute. And together with Irene at, uh, in the schools, started to look at some of the other neighborhoods, not that far away, and the kinds of public recreational infrastructure they had and they wanted that for here. And so there were many hot discussions at, uh, at city council, at the neighborhoods committee and the council Michael, itself. Michael. And the neighbors prevailed. We went over and looked at what Swansea has, the clubhouse, the grounds. And they said, you know, we're not asking for any more than anyone else, but we want it to be we want to be treated the same way and given the facilities and the amenities. And so far it's worked. Yep. But the schools played an enormous part in making this a reality. And that was due to a number of, of um, people who are not here today, 
um, who galvanized the schools, the kids. We went down to City Hall with two streetcars filled when we went to the Neighborhoods Committee the second time. And I think KK cried. He'd never seen anything like it. With his whole, we had bikers with their chains and studs and old um, Polish seniors shaking their fingers and saying, Chris, church basements aren't gonna cut it anymore. We want a proper place for us where we don't have to pay. We had mothers with babies in arms and all the kids from all the schools in the neighborhood. They created songs, they spoke. It was an amazing effort and it was successful. I think it's an example of what communities can do and uh, working with politicians of all stripes really if you look at who's been involved with moving this forward inch by by inch. Oh, when I started I was a PC. <laughs> and Chris Corwin Kaczynski who pushed it very hard and then and Sylvia and Gord and and uh, in each case, the community has said, we want to uh, keep this, we want to use it, we want it to, for children. And I mean, looking at the innovative ways that, that the community has used funding, uh, Evergreen, the Urban Institute, FCM, as well as... Uh, as government itself. This is a real labor of love and a labor of healthy community building.